first of all, I want to say thank you to everyone that's come here on behalf of the family. This is a special time in their lives. I want you to remember that we're here to celebrate a life. Uh, Francis is going to be dearly, dearly missed by everyone. But on the flip side, she had 59 wonderful years in which she touched a lot of people's lives. And she was very, very, very special person. If you don't mind, we'll go ahead and open up in prayer. Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you for Frances. We thank you for her family. We thank you for what you did through her life and touching ours and changing them. Lord, I ask that you be with the family and the friends, that you, your peace would overwhelm them, and as the days go on, that they will be comforted and at peace. And Father, I thank you for all that you've done for us, for Francis, for her family, friends, and I give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> We uh, have been friends with Francis for 25 years, I think it was longer than that, we first met her, and she uh, touched our lives. I couldn't imagine a person that was so loving and caring as Francis was. She was always doing something for somebody. She. Um, one of the ladies in our church, and my wife will share more, but was working at a nursing home, and Frances loved to sew, so what did she start doing? She started making um, lap blankets for the residents, and just was handing them out, and they just enjoyed that, but she enjoyed it more, being able to give. I remember when Frances was about to turn 50, and we had a, she was helping us with a house. And there was a, a man there, Wayne. He kept calling her ma'am and she said, I'm not 50 yet, don't you call me ma'am. <laughs> so I kind of wonder if she checked out before her 60th birthday because she didn't want to check be 60. So. But joking aside, Francis, she was 50, she was 59, would have been 60, August 24th. She was born and lived in Lorraine almost all of her life. She graduated from Clearview High School in the class of 1980. <clears throat> she got on at Ford about 22 years ago and was working there, which she enjoyed. It was tiring and it was wore her down sometimes, but she enjoyed the people. Whenever we talked to her, she'd always talk about the different ones. She had one guy that always would come to her and tell her the Mexican joke of the week. And she'd share some of them, but uh, she just laughed. She had come to our church about 25 years ago and, and was a very faithful member there, always helping. Matter of fact, whenever we had a dinner or anything like that, Frances was right there. If not cooking something, she was helping us clean up, set up, do whatever. But she was the first one in and always the last one out, making sure everything had gotten cleaned up. And she was just that type of person. She went on many mission trips with us. She'd been to Mexico, almost didn't get her out of there. <laughs> Back when she was born, they said on the birth certificate, you know, they only had black or white, and their birth certificate said white, and they're looking at Francis, and they're like, you know, and finally, I think they start cussing at her in, in Spanish. Of course, she didn't know a lick of Spanish, or the ones she did know, she wouldn't remember. <coughs> but he finally agreed to let her leave Mexico. And then she went down to Chile with us, been to Honduras many times on medical missions. She was a special person. She is a special person.
She enjoyed collecting fabrics and antiques and special things, which in time became very sentimental to her, and she would pass them on to family members or friends. I, that's what I say, family. Excuse me. Family and friends were her most important thing. Her children, even though she'd get aggravated with them, they were always my Ralph, or my James, or my Nikki, or my Billy. Always possessive. And uh, she'd tell us of their accomplishments and the things they do. And even though she'd be aggravated, she'd love them. And then, of course, when the grandkids start showing up, she was delighted. She just couldn't wait to hold them, love on them, buy them things, <laughs> take care of them. That's was Francis. And they were one of her greatest happiness. And she'd always talk about her brothers and her sisters. And... Uh, love them, do anything for them to help them. So I'm, I'm just sharing all these things with you guys so that you, know, you all know she was special. And the great thing about it was that we know where she's gone now. She left behind her, her four children, Ralph Harris, James, Nicole, and Billy with her grandchildren. I'm gonna call you Maddie, because I'm not sure how to say the full name. My apologies. Sarah Lee, Ralph Harris, the fourth, Zalia, Lily, and Emery. Her brothers Joseph and Manuel, her sister Dolores, her stepfather Robert Burns, and she was preceded to death by her brother Fernando, Cipriana, her nephew Jose, David, and her parents Jose and Lucas. Again, I just can't tell you how special this lady was. So, I've shared some of my memories, and I'm gonna open up the floor to you if anybody wants to come up and share something about Francis. You're more than welcome to at this time. I don't think I'll be able to say any memories today. <clears throat> Hard to even talk now. I want to just read some words that I would like to say to my mom. It'll probably sound like a rant, but um, there it goes. <clears throat> to my mother, I am in loss of words. God take you from us too soon. We had so much more love to give you. Mommy wanted to show you her artwork. So I wanted to give her besties more finger hearts. And little Ralph wanted to make banana bread with you. You were such a crucial part to this family. The glue that kept everyone intact. The reasoning when family were fighting. You had such a beautiful and loving soul. You lit up every room you stepped in. Your love was so great, you even had a second family, your four family. The amount of love and memories they have of you is amazing. And your 20 plus years, 
you have such an impact. They too lost a mother, a sister, and a friend. You will truly be missed, but never forgotten. That's about as much as I got with that. But me and Nicole were going over um, these pamphlets here when we were going through the things, and it's about 20 or 30 scriptures or poems that we could have picked. But we got this one, and as soon as we read it, it hit hit hard. And I don't know if you guys have read it, but I'm going to read it to you. It's called Come to Me. God saw you getting tired when a cure was not to be. So he closed his arms around you. and whispered, come to me. You didn't deserve what you went through, did not. And so he gave you rest. <clears throat> God's garden must be beautiful. He only takes the best. And when I saw you sleeping so peaceful, free from pain, I could not wish you back to suffer that again. Mom, <clears throat> didn't deserve, you know, what she went through at the end, but the last thing that I heard my mom speak and ask coherent, my uncle was there with his kids and he told her, bye, my, bye, sis, love you. And she was in the eye of it, but she shot up and said, I love you all. And that was that. We got her home. She was sick of being in that hospital. All she wanted to do was go home, and we got her home. I love you all, and I thank you for coming. From the bottom of my heart, it means so much. I saw. I wanted to be funny or something, but I didn't. And. Thank you, everybody. I might need a timer, because uh, I don't have anything written down, but my mom, my mom was so special and so caring. When we were little, there was two or three times where we were just riding around Lorraine, and she picked up an old lady one time and an older man one time to, to keep them from walking. Like, who does that? With, with their kids in the car, but it was the 90s. And that's just that just shows you the initiative that she took when it came to taking care of people. And I was so proud to take care of her. And, and a really common thing that people have been saying is they didn't know, they didn't know her struggle, and it's because she didn't want you to. She wanted you to remember the good. She wanted you to remember her smiling and laughing and being the strong, independent woman she has always been. And she did say that she loved everyone. And she meant it. And we're very grateful for the support and the appreciation and the love that has been shown because she did deserve it. So thank you. I just want to share something about Francis that a lot of people don't know because we took all our mission trips together. We took two trips to Mexico and I figured we took eight to Honduras. And every time we went, she always took stuff for the people there and especially for those who were in nursing homes and she would make something for them because the nursing homes there aren't anything like what we have here. They just basically take the elderly to the place and 
drop them off and never come back. So they never see family once they're dropped off there. And it's not that they couldn't, it's just that the people don't want anyone to know who was related to them so that they would take them in. But we had a lot of funny experiences together. And um, uh, we, there was one time too that we went to a training on how to reach people in low income housing and do clothing giveaways and children programs and, and all that. And we were just all hyped up. We couldn't wait to get back to do the programs that we had been taught to do. And on the, it was two o'clock in the morning when we finally got back. And we were thinking, yeah, we can't wait to feed the hungry. We can't wait to do things for people. And as we were coming down over by the Henderson Bridge, we had a bag full of leftover chips that we snacked on in the back of the car. And as we came over the bridge, we saw this man walking at two o'clock in the morning with a brown bag, and he was going like this. And we thought, oh, we found a drunk. We can go ahead and feed this guy. So we stopped the car and, and you know, she yelled at him, hey, are you hungry? And the guy said, well, why? And she said, well, we got all these chips here in the back of the car, would you like to have them? And he goes, well, yeah, I guess so. And he's still carrying this brown bag with this nozzle on it and, and doing like this as he's walking up to the car. And she reaches back and got the bag of chips and handed it to him. And she goes, we fed a drunk. And with that, with that, the bag fell. And he didn't have any liquor in there at all. He had whipped cream. And he, he was drinking whipped cream out of a brown bag. And here we thought we had done something really good. And he turned around. She looked at me and I looked at her and I said, I won't tell if you don't tell. <laughs> that here we thought we had done something really funny and or really good and it turned out to be really funny. And then she told me another story one time and it's going to involve Nikki here. I've already told it to her, but uh, she called me up one time and said, I got to tell you what happened to me last night. I said, what happened to you? She said, you know how you feel when somebody comes in the room and you're asleep and you just got that sense that somebody's in here? I said, yeah. She said, well, that happened to me last night. I just had this feeling somebody was in the room. She said, so, she said, all of a sudden she just woke up and her eyes popped open and here was Nikki and Billy looking over her. And she goes, what are you two doing out of bed? And they go, we just don't, we wanted to know why you were making that funny noise while you slept. She was snoring. <laughs> so every time that we would go to Honduras, she always brought me a bag of earplugs because we shared the room together. But we had a lot of fun doing things together when we would go on our mission trips. And we were all victims of her selfies. She'd wait till we got in an <laughs> awkward position and then she'd be taking a selfie of herself, but she had all the rest of us in the background doing something we weren't supposed to do. So uh, anyhow, we uh, had a lot of fun with her and, and she had a serious side too when it came to her family, but uh, when we got her down there, she, she was a lot of fun and they all miss her. I've gotten so many text messages from the people in Honduras saying we miss her and they wish the best for the family during this time. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> uh, Rafi was right about my mom saying that she loved everybody. That's, uh, what, that's the last things I heard her say too. And um, she's very grateful, and she loved her grandkids, and she loved everybody. Um, I don't know how, there ain't no words to explain how grateful she was just to have, um, just to have her family. And I know she was hardworking. Uh, she worked so hard to, you know, just keeping her job and taking care of her family. Um, I know she made a lot of difference in people's lives. Anybody else?
else like to share? very beginning. It was about welcome. 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 I remember similar stories about welcome this person, welcome that person. Everybody was welcome. It didn't matter who. I gotta say thank you. years ago. Y'all included me in the ups and the downs. <coughs> 38 years ago, <coughs> we laughed and we cried. I'm thankful. times have happened over the years and a lot of sad times have happened over the years. I've met new friends, I've met new family, thanks to Frances and her family. We've connected and disconnected and reconnected and it's been <coughs> It's been a wonderful welcome to have all the good memories. I can't think of a bad memory. I really can't. last two years of being able to come up with my family and visit with her in a nursing home at the house. Just and to the grandbabies, thank y'all. To the partners and everybody, just thank y'all. Because I know she felt the love. I know she family again from, from my family to y'all we offer continue love continue <coughs> condolences and if there's anything that we can do please let us know you are welcome Most of you know Jesus Christ was the biggest part of her life. 
there was a time after her mother had passed away that she uh, went through, a, she called it a Great Depression. She said she had problems with drugs and alcohol. And somebody introduced her to Jesus. She knew about him, but she didn't know him. And when she had received him, he began to change her life and turn it around to the Francis that we love and know. And so, and she just loved him. She loved him with all of her heart. She'd always talk about him, share him with people. And I believe that's one of the things that helped her become just the love that she was. Because she wanted to do more for everyone that she encountered. Jesus had said, you know, talking about his father, and I know his and I know his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said to me, so I speak. And then he went on further down and said, in my house, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. That's what he has for those that love him. A place in heaven. That's where Frances is. I'm sure she's exploring it and looking at all the things that the Lord put in there just for her. That's how much he loves us. The word says that he loved, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus would then be born he would live his life out to the age of approximately 33 years of age. <clears throat> At that point, he gave his life for all of us. He paid on that cross the ultimate purchase that we would have forgiveness for all of our sins, that all of them would be wiped out. You see, God is a just God, the Father. He had to deal with the whole sin problem. And by Jesus coming and dying in our place, he then took upon him all the sins of the world. That includes from Adam to the last man standing. Everyone's covered. That's why God will not condemn you of sin. But God made a condition. He said, you have to call on the name of the Lord. You have to receive what Jesus did. And if you don't do that, then you get the consequences of what sin was. Even though God never wanted you to do that. That's why he paid the price. And it's very simple. You just ask him to be your Lord. You just ask him to come into your life. And he'll gladly do that. I read about a person that had a vision. It was after that terrible Christmas many years ago in which that tsunami wiped out tens of thousands of people in the Philippines. And what he saw was this. Jesus standing there. And all of these Muslim people standing before him. He was talking to them. He was like, I don't understand. They always say Jesus was not the Son of God. Why are they here? <coughs> and the person giving him the tour said this. He said, 
these people knew enough to call on the name of Jesus before they died. And the Lord has to honor his word. If you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. A friend of ours, a friend of my wife, she went to college. He's a counselor in New York City. And after 9-11, he kept listening to, he's a counselor. He had to deal with the people that were struggling with the whole event in New York City. You know, we look at it from a distance. They lived it. And he kept getting these reports of these people. Listening to those that jumped out of the buildings and the things they were crying was Jesus save me. Point here is this none of us have to die and not know Jesus. As simple as it is. And so we're going to close out here shortly. But I want to say a simple prayer with you guys. Because there's a promise for us. Thessalonians 4, 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. That's our hope. That's our promise. We know Francis did. And I hope all of you have. But either way, pray this prayer with us. Dear Father, I ask you to make Jesus my Lord. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life and to be my Lord. And teach me of you. Holy Spirit, I ask you to reveal him to us. And I thank you. In Jesus' name. Go with this and remember this. <coughs> when Jesus was talking to Martha after her brother was dead in the tomb, he said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe you this? It's important that we live like Francis lived, loving one another, caring for one another, doing good for one another, forgiving one another. That's what she did. She'd get upset, but she'd move on and forgive and love that person. So I thank you again in behalf of the family. I thank you for being here. And remember the family in the weeks to come. And comfort them and support them with all that you can do. I just want to play this one song because this was something when it first came out that we would listen to together when we would be on the plane. And I just want to play it for you all of you.